Not particularly fast, but damn, it's a beauty. If you're looking for outright performance, you're better off getting in a in red line. As this Opel GT puts out just under 100 horsepower on a good day. It's real light though. At under 1800 pounds, you won't find a steel in a body like this in a modern car. Oof. The suspension though is rougher than the mental stability of most of my patients. It doesn't help that it probably still has its original bushing since the Nixon administration. Fun story about how I obtained this open. It was passed on to me from my late aunt Emmy Sue Elias, bless her heart, and her three first names. During her final year, she really started to lose it in the head. Picked up a new hobby which included bringing a boombox to funerals. Wanted to play a list of her favorite songs to cheer people up. Problem was the playlist was the song Happy by Feral Williams duplicated a hundred times. Well, actually the bigger problem was that she showed up and invited. Something about old age causes people to completely ignore any social norms. But the biggest mystery is how someone with such bad music taste can have such good taste in cars. But I digress. Going deeper into the forest and that 86 is still on my ass. But at least I did buy an overpriced Econo box from a Chinese car dealer. Remember kids to always drive by line of sight. Not all corners have the same amount of visibility. It does take a good amount of movement to steer this car a little bit. It ain't no trouble coming from a 60s Mustang. Compared to a Miata, this could change your life in a good or bad way. Classic cars like these are meant to be driven with a calm approach. Take a look at how relaxed my hands are, for example. Skip the monster energy drink in the morning and instead get a good night's sleep. Cut your addictions in your life and you will see results in your lap times. Sometimes it can be difficult to identify productive habits from destructive habits. Let's examine modifying cars as an example. The act of purchasing and installing a part will bring temporary happiness in the form of a quick endorphin release in the brain. But that same sensation cannot be experienced again until you make another purchase. If it sounds very similar to a drug problem, it's because it is the same concept. People are spending too much to feed their material needs and are getting no useful investment for their long-term happiness. There is a silver lining though, which is the ability to connect with people and have a sense of community. But if that group revolves around the same bit habit, you may find yourself all stuck in the same mud pit. You can turn your love of cars into something productive though. Focus on driving and specifically focus on the act of improving your driving ability. Doing this puts you in an environment that builds your neural pathways while increasing your spatial reasoning. It may not seem obvious, but doing mentally stimulating activities like this will help in other aspects of your life. Ditch the hard parking mentality and strive to become a person with strong skills. And if someone in your life is struggling with materialistic addictions, be that friend to set them in the right path. Fear of wearing out the car is the biggest distraction from improving. And as I take this 1970 Opel GT to its limited grip, I say there should be no excuses. Open the door or I'm going to throw rocks through your windows, you dumb whore. I want the money. Uh, I'll raise enough hell till you give in and give it to me. Ha 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 